are such an asshole. Hello, children. I gotta check. I'll do that later. The internet's acting up. So, I don't know. Uh, uh, request. Hey, asshole. Repeat customer here. Yes, you have addressed my problems many times before, and I'm finally implementing your advice. I, You, you sound apologetic. Look, most people, if they do it my way, they ask my advice once, and they do it, and it costs them anywhere between 30 to 60 bucks. You, my fine sir, keep coming back to me with questions, looking for the easy way out, or like, oh, 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 oh. I'm like, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Your indecision, your, uh, I don't know if a cowardice is too strong a word, your, your, your tepidness. Oh, do I, do I pick blue? Do I have the cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching? You bought me my junk silver yesterday, my good sir. <clears throat> Very boring purchases. And I hope our relationship continues in this way so that you might buy me some more ammo in the future. But I, we could keep going. We could keep going. I love it when people don't solve their problems. I love that. Just like a drug dealer loves it when people don't get off the drug. Or, or nutritionists, fat doctors, health doctors, whatever they're called, love it when women never hit the treadmill and do what they say. We love it. So let's see what minor variation of the problem that you have is this time. And I'll see you in about three weeks. Huh? All right. All right. That's good. I'll start picking out my ammo now over at the fleet farm. I got to go into town later on tonight. Uh, hi, ass repeat customer here. Yes, you have addressed my problems many times before, and I'm finally implementing your advice. It will take time, though. Ooh, you take your time, man. Take your time and second guess yourself all the time. I'm right here for you. And in the meantime, I'll have to continue working full time. Confused? Let me refresh your man memory. I don't need, okay, for the benefit of the audience, early 30 something male. Higher end accountant, six figs, single, no kids, no debt, 13,000 savings cash, 140,000 retirement savings. As you can tell, I work in an accounting field similar to Vlad Elkham's. Ever since the pandemic began in 2020, I've switched four employers. I'm currently on my fifth one. Why do I job hop so much? Two reasons. <clears throat> employers advertise work-life balance and ask you work 60 hours during never-ending busy seasons, right? We're familiar with that, tuning into the Elkins Accounting Hour. Employers ask you to perform more than more than the average title requires. I could have swore five, six, 18 consultations ago, I told you to set up a side gig. Let's see if you followed through, shall we? Let's tune in. We return to our hero. <clears throat> I currently have a problem with number two. I have about a decade worth of experience on my belt. My current duties require me preparing accounting work. The problem is that my current employer is giving me managerial duties despite me not having a manager tile, me not having a manager salary, me, and me explicitly negotiating at the time of that hire that I will not be given managerial work. Their explanation for such unreasonable working conditions is that they do not have enough managers on staff and they need someone to pull some weight. And did, okay, so, so now they changed the deal. Now it is up to you in this individual situation to say no. And here's the email proof that I have. <clears throat> or, oh, you would like me to do this work. That will cost you this much. That is outside the scope of the, the you have broken the contract. This is not the first time this happens to me. Well, of course, now people, now people want a piece of me. This is not the first time it happens to me. <clears throat> the problem that I have with the current employer is that during the year, I explicitly went over many times with them. I do not want to take on managerial responsibilities. Right. You, you did the right thing. There's no doubt about it. And now here they are. They lied. And now they have to pay a price. They were fine with it at the time of the offer. I also negotiated my salary according to make way less than the average manager would right now. Clearly, since this is the fifth time this is happening to me, it seems that accounting world is bleeding managers that people will take on responsibility. Now, I'll, I'll grant you this because <clears throat> I was in the similar situation um, in banking. Like I, the, the banks I kept working for, I'm like, I thought was bad luck. Same thing with girls that you're dating when you're young. You think, oh, this is just bad luck. And when I worked in banking, it's like, oh, the... I was supposed to be analyzing or doing data entry or something. And then they had me file on facts, do clerical work. This can't be right. 
I quit that internship, go to another one. This isn't the job. It's, it's filing and faxing again, clerical work. No, I want to remember working at Wells Fargo, just data entry, even though the title says analyst. But by the way, what boomers will do and, and more modern employers will do is they'll give you a title. That's your first job description. That should that should be congruent with what your duties are. And if it's not, they're lying to you. And then I went to other banks and then I, maybe I was an analyst. I was actually doing underwriting and, and credit analysis, <clears throat> but then they lend money to the dumbest people. This is crazy. This is dumb. I'm going to go to the other bank. Oh my God, this bank is like it too. It's all the industry as we found out later when the housing crisis came and accounting it's all of accounting it's all the accounting industry which once again 38 consultations ago i told you to be self-employed but you don't want to listen to that so here we are again but you are right but you have to understand there is no going to another it's going to be the same thing at another accounting firm and and you could you could negotiate it like you could say i'm gonna be very clear with you and i'm filming this right now <clears throat> making it very clear i'm not doing managerial duties and if you come to me with managerial duties here is my egregiously overpriced hourly fee so this is my w2 work and if you would you got you got a layup right here dude opportunity to be self-employed the second you come to me with a duty that is not whatever i what bookkeeping standard staff accountant stuff you will now go to, you know, Frank Frankerson's accounting <clears throat> LLC, and there is my hundred and twenty dollar an hour rate, and I will keep the time and I will do it. But that is what you're paying. So if you think you could sneak this in later, it's not going to happen with me. And if that's the case, then this interview is over. But if you'd like a staff accountant or whatever rank and file accounting work they want to hire you for, and you want to do, but then you you think there's going to be a potential. Here it is. It's two hundred dollars an hour, and that's not negotiable. And then, and then that's it. Look, <clears throat> I know it's weird. Uh, the employees being put in the position of power where you can dictate the terms, but you got to be like that. And film it, film it. You know, just like you would a girl. If we have sex tonight, you that does not make you my girlfriend. That does not make us married or committed. <clears throat> I will never marry you. You will never live at home with me. We will never get married. I'm dating other girls. Film it. So then, oh my God, where is this going? Hey, do you remember this conversation? Let me refresh your memory. Bam. Oh, yeah. So here's my $200 an hour fee. What's the scope of the project? Okay. Well, I get to work from home on that. So I'm going to finish up my work here today. And then I'm going to go put on my LLC hat. I'm going to go home. I'm going to do that work for you for $200 an hour. <clears throat> and you know what? If they say no, fine. You got a regular job. It's like any new employer you're going with. Uh, it seems I cannot, since I cannot seem to avoid this niche, I just say F it and find a new accounting role with a manager tower where I could get twenty, forty thousand dollars salary increase. Yes, yeah, you should. Yeah, if you could find another one, sure. Yes, my hours of stress would probably increase as well, but it seems that there's no way for me to avoid that. Instead of suffering with my crispy one hundred thousand a year, I could be suffering with one hundred thirty to one hundred fifty salary per year. Yeah, you absolutely should because you're gonna. It looks like you're gonna have to do that work anyway. You might as well. <clears throat> uh, basically, since I cannot accomplish work-life balance, should I just become a, a whore and sell myself the highest bidder possible without any regard to work-life balances? There seems to be none. Yes. Temporarily. Okay. Now, there's a big asterisk about forming your own company and getting self-employed, which we're not going to mention that again because that's, that's a separate thing. <clears throat> but you hit it, son. You nailed it. We are all whores. And the only thing at the end of the day, no matter how stressful or the type of work that it is, is how much money did you make? All right. I, I, I'm not going to pull out how not to become a millennial again and read the, the, sec, uh, the section on career, the purpose of a career again. We've gone over it a million times before. But I don't care if you're doing managerial accounting or managerial work 
or a regular old staff accounting or whatever it is that you want to do, <clears throat> whatever, if you want to be successful, or in your case, you want to be less stressed about this, what you need to do is realize that it is not what you do in the hour. It is the fact that an hour of your life is gone and never to be returned again. And the very, 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 very short version of what's in that chapter is I was a senior credit analyst. That's what my job was. And they didn't lie about it. That's what I was. I was doing all the analysis. <clears throat> and there was nothing to do. And so back then in 2004, 2005, I was paid $35 an hour. And I could be paid $35 an hour to do the underwriting for commercial lending or whatever. Or I could do paid for $35 an hour to do filing and faxing. Or until I decided to do that clerical work just for something to do, I was paid $35 an hour to pay my bills, floss my teeth, go to the bathroom multiple times a day, uh, go for a walk around the campus. And whether I was walking on the campus, which would be perhaps the, the nicest use of time, or flossing my teeth, which is good dental hygiene, or actually doing real work, it didn't matter. You know why? Because Every day at the at the end of every day for every day, it was eight hours of my life gone. And once I realized <clears throat> I'm not some big Buddhist, okay, I'm not some monk with a Herculean mind that could just control its its wants and urges, all right. But I think one of the biggest accomplishments I achieve mentally, philosophically, is realizing it doesn't matter if I'm cleaning toilets or whether I'm there, I'm getting I more important. I am losing my life in increments of an hour. And all that matters is if I get the money for it. And so I would not stress about, well, it's manager work <clears throat> versus accounting work. One might have stress if you let people get to you. Otherwise, you're like, oh, yeah, it just comes with the job. That's why you pay me because I deal with idiots. And you don't let the idiots bother you like, oh, that you're idiots. That's why I'm paid money. No, I expect you to be idiots or it's tedium, which is what accounting is, whether it's staff accounting stuff, or whatever you want to do during the daytime. <clears throat> if you can, if you're unwilling, if you are unwilling to to form an LLC and start your side business, then you're and you're not going to learn another skill. You are now relegated to doing accounting. And it seems that every accounting company is going to somehow crowbar in. Crowbar Jones, crowbar in uh, some managerial work, then you might as well take the money and run. And here's the key thing. This is what it's up to you to implement it, but you could come back next week with the same question. You can either achieve that epiphany that it doesn't matter whether you do managerial accounting or what, because <clears throat> you're going to do it anyway. That much you do understand, I think, and you might as well get paid for it. But not to get upset about it and not let it disrupt your work-life balance, at least in terms of stress. Yes, you're going to have a lot more. You're going to have to do more work, more time. <clears throat> Don't let that bother you because it is what it is. And whatever managerial headaches come with being a manager, don't let it bother you. Like when I was younger, I get pissed off. What do you mean you want me to fax? Where's the real work? Why are you guys doing this? Da, da, da. I had expectations. When what I should have said, it doesn't matter what my expectations are. This is what it is. I got to worry more about the fact that I am giving this person, this employer, one hour of my time or eight hours a day. And that's all that matters. And they could say, Aaron, we want you to piss in a snowbank. Aaron, we want you to cut that person's hair. Aaron, we want you to clean the toilets. Aaron, we want you to fax a file. Aaron, we want you to... And, and then maybe we'll have you do the job that's your job title and what the original job duties were. Doesn't. Aaron, we need you to sit in this meeting and be incredibly bored with those people. That would be the true test. And I had to do that. <clears throat> Sitting in meetings where, where you're in an environment where you're going to suffer mental pain because meetings are for stupid people. And it's just to torture the intelligent people. Just to sit and ignore it. And like, I'd, I'd do my personal budgeting, you know, I do something. And if I go to me and I have a notepad, you know, my idealist, I just, you know, 
Then when it came time for me to talk, I'd say the thing that was important to the people. Yeah, we got this thing and that thing. Interest rates going up and you're all a bunch of freaking morons lending money to trailer trash and, and single moms with their stupid business ideas. And then, yeah, I'm done. And I go back to doing whatever it is I was doing. <clears throat> and I wouldn't care. It, it was nice. Like, I finally achieved it. And you need to achieve the same. So, again, the way to solve your entire problem so you could achieve work-life balance is, once again, I don't know if I mentioned this before, is to set up the LLC and to offer your services, even to these, these accounting firms, like, well, I'll do some of your management or I'll do some of this. I'll take this off your plate. <clears throat> it's remote. And I did to do. And, and here, are my, here are my terms. Accept them or not. And you could be that arrogant to these people. Like, well, here are my terms. Well, that's highly irregular. We don't. Well, you raised your children to be a bunch of journalism majors and not accountants, and now you're in desperate need of accountants. And I have that skill set, but I will not be commuting to a downtown major metro where I waste my time commuting. So you could see me to make sure I'm doing my work. That is, uh, that is so 2018. And you don't have to have that. Enjoy your shortage. Uh, but until you <clears throat> become self-employed, look, the only way you will achieve work-life balance is through self-employment. So what is today? Is today? It's Wednesday. Wednesday evening, you can go ahead and set up an LLC online through whichever state you prefer. You know how to do it. You're an accountant. You program a website. Or maybe you pay someone to program a website because you're not good at it. You get the domain name. do 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 and we could start tonight. You could be on your path to work-life balance today. And it's going to take a couple months where you're working a daytime job and hustling to get more work on the, on the self-employment side. <clears throat> but I'm not joking. You would have been self-employed right now if you follow my advice originally when we first talked. Wouldn't you be self-employed? Wouldn't you have it? And then you have the work-life balance. This problem would be over. That's right. That's right. But in the meantime, yes, take the money and run. Because you're going to be doing managerial work anyway, you might as well be paid for it. And, and to the benefit of you to get the closest thing we can to work life balance, you're at least not stressed out about it. Don't worry about the management work, it doesn't matter. Don't worry that you work at 60 hours a week, you're getting paid for it. But your nirvana, your happy place, your promised land of Canaan will be moved a lot closer to you if today you start your LLC. And not or and and you create your website and you get the email set up and not or and you start hustling and do some marketing. Heck, some of your previous employers you could go to, yeah, I set up this company. You know what the work they got to do. I can do that project for you for two hundred dollars an hour. You don't have to pay me uh, health care. And and they'll be like, you cocky son of a bitch. Yep. So do you want that done or not? You'd be amazed how much people rely and will pay a dick. You'd be amazed because dicks get shit done. We do. We're the ones that get it done. And if push comes to shove, I was like, oh, hey, remember I quit then? Yeah. I heard you were short staff. Remember? Yeah. It's a funny thing about this company. Now, that project you had that I remember you you were in desperate need to get done and it <clears throat> it was the bane of your existence. That bane goes away for $200 an hour at Frank Frankerson's accounting LLC. Would you would you like to hire me out to do that? Good. I have a retainer just in case there's a, there's no mission creep. And if they come to, to, to you with mission creep, you just say no. I think you could do that with your current job right now. You say, no, I'm not doing that. What? 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 Because they need you just as much for the rank and file accounting work that you're doing. I mean, that's another way you can say, no, I told you I'm not doing that. You guys can use the word no. You can. All these employers, your bosses, your managers, right? They raise their children to be a bunch of worthless liberal arts, social science majoring putzes who are going to be of no value to society. You don't have competition. You could say no. And unless they, they do fire you or get rid of you, <clears throat> they're going to be in way worse shape than you are. I mean, you got a, a good amount of savings. So you guys could say no. Say no, that wasn't part of the job. I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> or the, your future employer is like, I do nine to five, I go home. If, if you cannot load up more work, I mean, they're like, you know, I'm going to do my work. I'm going to get the job done. Here's here's the, the 
definition of duties. Oh, that ad hoc ad hoc work, you cross that out. I will not be doing that. And I go home at five. <clears throat> five. Not 505, not 501. Hey, Bill, you know, we really need you to stick around. Five. And that's me getting up from my seat, shutting down the computer, and I got about 30 seconds to clock out exactly at five. And then I go home. And you know what? You don't bother me at home because that's my private life. You have every right to draw that line. And all these cocksucking corporate employers are going to have to go, oh, okay, all right. And until unemployment goes up, that you have a bevy of, of hungry, starving accountants that are skilled and trained. <laughs> you could just say, no, you're going to pay me a living wage. And I'm going to go home and you're going to leave me alone. And no, I'm not coming to your, hey, we're going to we're going to do a float in the parade. Yay. Uh, you are. We're going to go to happy hour. You know, the, we're here at the ABC Accounting Company family. We're going to go to happy hour, get some apps and some wings, get some get some IPAs. Wasn't that sound exciting? Sounds exciting for you guys. I'm going to go home and play video games. You know, we really like to see the faces. I'm sure you do. What you like, what you're going to get. Two different things. I really like to be home and see my children's faces, although you don't have kids. Oh, oh, I understand. I understand. You see, it's just we here at corporate America, none of us have families or anyone that loves us back at home. And so we just go out and go nightclubbing and bartending and all that kind of stuff. We, we, we create a surrogate family here. And now, well, look, we got ping pong downstairs. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Why not? You know, if, if your life is that depressing, I mean, OK. Have, have you considered? Uh, I can't see it. <laughs> Have you considered why you're alive? <laughs> Have you contemplated that existential question? Uh, oh! Oh! P.S. I am building my own tax hustle on the side, but it'll take some time. If I... No. No. It does not. How do I know? Because that fine website, assholeconsulting.com, that took me one security guard shift to, to bang out. I set up the LLC. I created the website. I got my EIN number. And I transferred funds digitally from my private account to a, a business account that I set up. <clears throat> you, the only part of your... That's good. That's good you're doing that. You're doing the thing that needs to be done. The only thing that needs to be done that's going to take a little bit of time is the marketing. So what's the website? You got a website? Is the website set up, right? Took me four hours to program my, uh, my albeit really crappy website. Do you have a website? You have a website. You got the LLC, right? You got to have the LLC and the EIN number, right? Like that is a 15 minute chore, right? Right, you got that, right? That very simple thing that would have, that, 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 you got that down, right? Right? <clears throat> I'll go on a diet tomorrow. All right, so link below are two books, Batch of Pad Economics. That's how you should manage your thing. And da, 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 da. <laughs> Ron, you got him. <laughs> I'm going to have to throw it, Wagey. Okay, Wagey. Wagey, you're going to throw that in with the normies, conformies, and inferiors. Okay, normie. Oh, look, a normie, Wagey, the worst of both worlds. Let me guess, you vote Democrat and you help out the children. Let me guess, you got your MBA, bro. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Who do I know this guy? Wait, wait. People in finance and banking make some of the highest wages, so they are the highest value to society. No, uh, there's a slight difference. Because th when you need to be bailed out or you're sued out of existence, that means that you are stealing it and getting it through ill aims. And so your salary is actually should be subtracted to put a negative sign to your value to society. <clears throat> there was, uh, there was a, uh, a French trader. Uh, worked for one of the larger finance firms in France and he kept making bets that went the wrong way. And I think he ended up costing the company and thus ultimately the French taxpayer, like over a billion dollars that you could put a negative sign next to his, uh, to his salary. Um, all right, let's go to the super chat. Oh, and then also link below is, um, how not to become a millennial. And the only reason I link that has, it really has nothing to do with uh, generational politics or sociology. 
Uh, please do read that chapter about your career, guys. For everyone, I go for a week vacation, come back. Did you do the thing I told you to do quickly and expediently? No. Okay, I'll be back in a month. <clears throat> um, you need to read that chapter so you know exactly the role a job and a career and a profession pay plays in your life. It is to make money, as much money as possible for the hours you sacrificed of your life. Now, girls, it's different. It is. It is different. I know only say men and women are women. The goal of your career is to give you value, purpose, and meaning in life. And to give, and then the money is a, a fringe benefit, a side benefit. I mean, really, I'm being serious. You're, it's the prestige and status and, and what you do for society and the tie you put in. That's the number one thing for a career. Um, the second thing, the money is used to buy physical, um, for lack of a better word, physical proof, physical evidence that you have achieved that status. So handbags, shoes, uh, fancy downtown areas, that's what you should buy with that money, all right? And um, buy rounds for your girlfriends, that's what you should do with that. And, oh, we should get an advanced degree. Master's absolute minimum, minimum master's. That's what the money should be repurposed to is go and get a master's degree. All right, <clears throat> Anthony Ciertino. Five bucks. What if you make 400K as a university dean of diversity? That is also a waste of money. Look, guys, don't, don't, don't give me the technicalities. Don't, don't be Karen. Don't be actually. Yeah, I know that's a waste of money. But usually when you let's put if it is a free market, all right. For example, teachers or, or you put a negative sign next to it. Why? Because they're not put to the free market. That's a government job. And the government comes in, predominantly Democrats as well. We should pay people this much. Like I would say the military even too, like all the, oh, I, I'm, I'm 49% disabled because I got a, I got a hangnail. Oh, here's your $3,000 a month. That's negative. All right. I'm saying ceteris paribus, you know, you leave it alone. Someone willingly, there's the thing. The government comes to the taxpayer, puts a gun at their head, says, you're going to pay the teachers this much. Okay. But if it's me negotiating a, a, a price with the, a guy to make me a skateboard, all right, and I conclude, yeah, I'll pay you $25 an hour. That is that is the value society has conferred upon that individual. <clears throat> Me, Mike, five bucks. This is nothing new. If they discovered competency or you demonstrate potential, they will shoehorn more productivity onto your plate without title or money raised. Yep. Yep. You got to be able to walk away and say no. That's That's the number one thing. Taekwondo, two euros, is reaching to the FTSE 500 VP level worth it, Cappy. Oh, yes, it totally is, Juan. <clears throat> Especially uh, FT, I think you mean the FTSE 500. That would be your um, the United Kingdom's uh, version of the S&P 500, of a Fortune 500 company. Are you referring to the Fortune 500 company? I'm trying to adjust for the, the Europeanness. Um, <clears throat> no, it's not. not. Not for me, not for you. Not for the average person. The at look, the average person, and then the not so average person. You should be aiming for contentment, happiness, and freedom. If if you want to be a vice president of the S and P five hundred or Fortune five hundred company, you're you don't have a life. You know, look at what's her name, the gal that was the CEO of Yahoo. You know, she 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 had the crib brought into her office for her child that she had. Nancy Pelosi doesn't have a life. She thinks she does, but she does not. Um, I'm trying to think. It, all these people who are saying, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, you, you couldn't pay me enough to trade places with them. Um, but they're, they're, those are unique. They're driven by, I want to create something great and amazing. And so they're get, they get the, it's not even the money that they're after. It's, <clears throat> it's about creating something amazing and great. Um, I would say the same thing with Bill Gates uh, or any inventor, you know, or Warren Buffett. He, it's not that he has billions, it's that he gets to manage the money. And that's his, that's his, I hate to say it, but it's the actual use of the word passion. Becoming a corporate executive at a large corporation or a vice president? No, 
You're just there to manage. You're you're there to babysit children, adult children, and hopefully they make a product or do their job. Ooh, you made? Did you make partner at a big law firm? Ooh, you downtown where all the action is? Are you She Hulk Attorney Law? I mean, uh, have fun, have fun. What you doing, Cappy? Yeah, I'm gonna go fishing. Gone fishing. Booby 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 boo. Scooby dooby shaggy too. Gone fishing. Scooby dooby dooby doo. He's the quarter Irish Jew. Nah, 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 nah. All right. Me, Mike, five bucks. You almost need to hide your knowledge to keep your chill 100K or maintain positive attitude, but be pain in rear with many questions to demonstrate inability. Just say no. Why Why go through that corporate? See, that's that's why I, I wouldn't deal with that. Well, you got to play corporate strategy. Ooh, you have to sabotage the other person's project. Ooh, you have to like, oh, you got to all leave. No. Hi. How you? You Malcolm Reynolds up. I do the job. I get paid. That's it. <clears throat> F you pay me, Robert De Niro. That's it. I mean, you, you go in on the interview. Let me explain to you how this is going to work. Yeah, and if, if you don't like the terms, fine. We can go home, save each other's time. The interview is over. I'm not doing extra work. I go home at five. I'm not doing social dimensional uh, uh, diversity inclusion training. This is the job I'm going to do. I'm not doing these jobs or anything outside of the job description right here. If you don't like that, we're fine. And, but if, if you come to me and put more work that's not here or you and we need you to stay, no, you find someone else. And if you don't like it, I'll see the job posting in another two months when you burn out the other guy. <clears throat> Channel 1800 Dung, our New Zealand agent in the field for five New Zealand dollars, saying hi to Cappy. Hi, Channel 1800. Say hi to the sister for me. Me, Mike, five bucks. Mission creep, project creep, easy there, bro dude. You're muscling in on my bro dude construction bid naz terminology. What's next, military alpha speak? <sighs> I, I I love the U.S. military, right? But anytime, like, oh, yeah, I get the PBRs and the ZTCs. I'm like, do you say that because you have small penises? Like, is the acronym like an indication that you all have small penises? You, you could just, we, we don't need to know you have a small penis. Just just use regular words. Matter of fact, I wouldn't use acronyms because then people know you got a small penis. Do you got a small penis? Shrigma mail, 10 bucks. It is better to contribute to my 401k pre-tax or Roth. Oh, I've been maxing out my 401k with pre-tax money. It depends on your age. General rule is the younger you are, you go more Roth. The older you are, you go more you know, the traditional or pre-tax. Um, but yeah, it all depends on your age and your situation. And, <clears throat> and life expectancy, that's another one people don't talk about. Dan Hunsaker, a part of the 1099 superior race, is an HSA worth it as a long-term investment tool? It's it's not it's not bad. I mean, yeah, it'll help you lower your um your uh medical bills. I believe it's tax deductible. Yeah, if you got some extra money, toss it in there. Uh, I'd have to look up on the um because it, it it has changed over the years. Beforehand, it was like use it or lose it, and then I was like, oh, you could keep it, and then it's like, well, what if I live? You know, I die, and there's still something, and you could pass it on. Um, it's not the worst. I would definitely do that before I do, a, say, an annuity or any form of insurance. Wholesome DJ aftershock two bucks yesterday proved America as lost. Cap vindicated. I did it. I thought it was still kind of a draw. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't watch the. I don't care. I did buy more silver yesterday. I might get some bullets today, and then I'm and I I got my solar panels, and then I go to Asia this winter. Ask me if the ask me if the elections bothered me. Ask me if I cared which what ha, what happened which way or whatever. I don't care. I'm gonna enjoy the decline, man. And then when. And then like, oh, it looks like the United States is getting a little communistic -y. I think I'm going to go now. And then I'll be sitting there, wherever it is, my Croatian hunt, watching you guys on the YouTube. Ah, they're burning our buildings down and the cops aren't doing anything. Unless we shoot the people burning the buildings down, then they arrest us. Yeah, what do we do? Where's the food? 
there is going to be a benefit. There will be thin people. The obesity epidemic will end when communism is implemented. Uh, Cabergoon Cabulous, five bucks. Funny, I had this conversation with daughter over breakfast on the rat race and materialism. Ever have an impulse buy and buyer's remorse cap? Yeah, but it's really rare, really rare. Rolo took me to this place called Jason Maximus, uh, which is a tailor down in Miami. And he's like, hey, you should you should treat yourself and <clears throat> get this get this cool outfit should be tailored. Get yourself a haircut and, and treat yourself. And he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. Like, yeah, when's the last time I had a haircut? You know, when's the last time I've been at a barber? I mean, um, when's the last time I bought myself a nice, nice outfit I, years ago, 10 years ago. And if I bought it, it was suits. So you're like, yeah, get, get this, get this out for this guy. I'm like, all right, these guys are the pros. They know what. So <clears throat> the guy, the tailor, not roll, the guy got me this ridiculous looking outfit where I look like a weapons grade douche. And the funny thing is I put it on and everyone's like, oh, wow, you look good. You look great. Oh my God. And then, you know, you know, I'm looking, I'm like, no, I look like a douche. And then Vince uh, LaRassa from Masculine Geeks, says, why do you look like a douche? I'm like, yep, this is going to be out of, this is going to be out of fashion in a year, but I did have a haircut and all that. And I did regret buying that. I did. It was overpriced. It was it was stupid. And um, but like, oh my god, I have to have it. No, it's been a long time. Like, oh, I really need this car. Is it? No, I'm not. I've had buyer's remorse, like when I go in and buy video games. But I I've realized that the the video game reviews are so unreliable and chaotic and all over the place that I um, uh, I just go to the used video game place and I'll. For really between four and eight bucks, buy a bunch of video games, throw them in, try them. Um, and obviously some I regret like, oh, this is crap. Like Battlefield 1. Oh, there's not a campaign? Oh, there's a micro campaign on here. Oh, I'm glad I waited seven hours for it to download and install on my Xbox. That's great. But I, I know I'm going to throw out at least three quarters of them or return them and get, you know, a dollar or two. Uh, so yeah, bad dragon breath, five bucks. I'm 30 years old and haven't saved a penny for retirement. In fact, I owe the government money. Ha ha. Well, good, good. Taiwando, two bucks. <clears throat> when will Rollo link you to with George Gammon? I I don't know. Um, it's not Rollo's job to link me to George Gammon. I've talked to George Gammon. I've been on, a, um, but, uh, it, it's uh, also like, you know, well, when's he going to hook me up with Robert Kiyosaki? It's like, that that's not his job. It's not like, oh, when are you going to hook me up with this? Well, you know, that person. It's like, you know, maybe you don't see behind the scenes, but we're all human beings still. Like, we're not, we're not superheroes. We all got lucky. I'll tell you that much. Whatever we did with ever this media, we, we are here now. You're like, oh my God, Aaron Claire. I'm like, no, <laughs> dude, I, I, I'm just me, man. <clears throat> and we all have jobs and we all have daytime things we got to do. And we're not like, oh, I'm going to set them up with this. I'm going to set them up with. Now, there are hustlers like that that do that. There is. Um, but I, I let's let's think about this. He hooks me up with George Gammon. Now I got to go on George Gammon's show, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. But now I have to consume George Gammon's material. So I'm not an impolite guest on his show. And I know what he talks about. And it would be the same thing. Hey, do you want to go on this lower show? George, you want to expo expose yourself to a large, you know, small, but more audience who maybe don't know who you are. And then he's like, oh, I got to go on the show. Da -da. And it's not that George doesn't like me or I don't like George. It's just like, I don't want to work anymore. Like, I want to do the fun things now. And so, um, you know, everyone, oh, when are you going to go on pop show? When are you going to do this? When are you guys going to do, a, when are you and Joker or, or TFM going to do a thing together? It's like, when we get bored enough with the other stuff we're doing and it's all settled and taken care of, and it's like, hey, wow, I got a break. Eh, I mean, give TFM a call. So, Dan Hunsacker, 559. One more thing. Got a Beretta FS Brigadier yesterday. Does Cappy approve? I don't know. I've, I've never fired a Beretta. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you like it, does do the bullets go where they're supposed to go? <clears throat> Does it fit well in your hand? Do you enjoy it? Okay, there it is. 
my favorite gun I leave down in Vegas. Just a good solid Springfield XD9 compact. I love it. I've had that thing for like 20 years. Uh, we all caught up. We're all caught up. There we go. All right. Uh, that's it. So the two books linked below. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.